Welcome to Structural Madness. In this particular video, we are going to talk about the impact of frequency content of a ground motion on the seismic response of a building. As we all know, a building is a multi-degree of freedom system, which means it has more than one mode that it can respond to. Now, on the basis of the frequency of excitation of the ground motion, different modes of the building can get excited. Let's say the natural frequency of ground motion is 0.5 Hertz and the building has two different mode shapes, 1 Hertz and 0.5 Hertz. Then as per this graph, the mode shape with a 0.5 Hertz should get amplified more as compared to the mode shape that has a frequency of 1 Hertz. That is exactly what is shown in this particular video. When I'm trying to shake the building very fast or the frequency is very very high compared to the frequency of the structure then it's not moving at all but as soon as i change the exciting frequency or the way i'm shaking over here that matches closely to the frequency of the structure then you can see it collapses that's what exactly happens with dynamic amplification factor in multi-degree of freedom system so let's take a look at uh, ground motion that causes a building with a very low frequency to move a lot more compared to a building of high frequency. Over here, it's a response spectrum curve of a site and this is the response spectrum of that particular ground motion. Now, as you can see that the ground motion is generating a lot more response close to a period of about three and a half to four seconds. Now, that just means that those modes will get excited a lot more compared to the modes that have a very low period or very high frequency just because the response coming from those particular single degree of freedom oscillators is very, very low. Now, because as we can see, the red line is the response spectrum for this particular ground motion and it has very low amplifications or spectral accelerations at those high frequencies those particular modes don't get excited in this in this 40 story tall building and the only reason is um, the content of the ground motion is such that it will just amplify the primary mode of the system rather than higher modes of the system and building more or less behaves like a single degree of freedom system because its higher modes are not getting excited at all in a way. Now this particular filtering effect is actually not captured in modal analysis because a modal analysis is just a dynamic response of a system under free vibrations, not forced vibrations. Over here in time history analysis, we actually test the building under forced vibrations because we are actually inputting the ground motions into our models. So we can capture these different behaviors appropriately. When we do modal analysis, the spectrum that we entered or the response spectrum that is entered into the softwares is just a flat out base code based response spectrums, which is generated from like maybe 3000 different earthquakes. And because each earthquake has a different frequency response, different periods gets excited and we just get an envelope of the spectrum. So it's very hard to filter out these particular effects of a building when we do modal analysis as we are just looking at an overall envelope of like what will happen when the building is kind of excited by an envelope of all these motions. But what that does is it actually underestimates the primary mode drift demands or the displacement demands in the building. What we should do is we now are looking at a high frequency content of a ground motion which just means that it's going to amplify all the higher modes of the building. At first we were just looking at a ground motion that was exciting a 3 second or 4 second single degree of freedom oscillator. Over here the ground motion is actually significantly amplifying 0.5 or 0.6 second single degree of freedom oscillator. 
So a 40 story building that can be seventh or eighth mode, that means a very high mode response of a building. So as soon as the ground motion starts, you can see that it's a drastically different response compared to what we just saw before. It's now more or less like acting in the higher modes than in its primary mode, which means that the building will have significantly higher sh shear demands because of its higher mode response as compared to its primary mode counterpart where it was just asking for more deformation demands. Because a short period or a high frequency mode is very localized, you will also see very high diaphragm accelerations, which means more diaphragm forces and more damages to non-structural components. So this is how we should actually look at buildings rather than just enveloping the response and looking at all the mode shapes impacting together. Instead of it, we should more or less look at individual components of the building as in, in under what kind of earthquake that component will see maximum demands in terms of either deformations or forces. Because an earthquake is really an, a random excitation and it's very hard to see what sort of excitation will there be. And in order to better estimate the different impacts or seismic impacts on a building, it is always better to look at things quantitatively rather than enveloping the response altogether for all different frequencies of vibrations in a particular building. So I hope you did enjoy this video. Please post your comments and questions in the comment section below. We'll be publishing a blog on the same topic too as soon as we can. Um, by the time you please subscribe to our blog, give this a thumbs up, share this video if you enjoyed it and keep hearing on the madness. I'll see you all later. Take care. Bye.